right, we're here with Timothy Johnson, Bellator heavyweight. who has got a fight coming up at Bellator 239 versus Terrell Fortune. How are you feeling? You're probably mid camp. These are the tough workouts. Yep. No. Now we're uh, we're definitely into the you know the grind of a camp, or it's going to be in, you know next week is going to be like oh, I wish the fight was here right now so I could just get it over with. Um, it's been a been a long process. I think uh, this camp. Uh, I've been tra I've been training a little bit more prior to knowing the fight that I had the fight coming up. So, but the camp was kind of short notice. Um, I just found out about it about six and a half weeks out of the fight. So, but I was I was kind of fishing for one um, after my fight with uh, Minikoff. I injured my knee and kind of had to let that heal up. It was a fairly substantial M MCL uh, tear, but they're like, uh, should fix itself, which it did. Um, so now I'm happy to just get back in and fight. <laughs> I want to rewind a little bit, and then I'll come back to Bellator. Mm -hmm. In researching your career, you went four and three in the UFC, which yep. is respectable. What happened there? Did you just did your contract run out, or did they release somebody who had a an above five hundred record, which is kind of bizarre, especially in divisions that aren't as deep? Yeah, um, I think you know, honestly, my contract ran out, and there was wasn't a lot of interest in them really resigning me. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with my fighting style. Um, and I'll be the most honest person about myself. You know, everyone's got to look themselves in the mirror. I'm not an entertaining fighter. I know that. <laughs> and unfortunately, we're our end game is put you know put rear ends in the seats. And um, no matter what records are, you know, you can look even at the guy Jared Rocheholt. You know, his UFC record. I think it was what do you go like six and six two and or something or six one, and one yeah. or something. And you know, yeah, it's because it was it's just his fighting style. Um, so I can't have Matt much hate for that. It's just yeah. It kind of it was. I went in that fight trying to grind out a fight, a win, so I could get a new contract. And actually, it worked uh, worked against me. But you know, I'm happy now where we're at, and you know, everything moves on. Now your opponent is a wrestler, so were yep. you. But I wanted to ask you: Do you tailor your camps for your opponent, or do you just work on Timothy Johnson? Um, I work on me. Um, you, there's a lot of things that. You that I can do better myself. Uh, even even if you work against, obviously opponents have tendencies and there's stuff that you want to try to um, capitalize on. But a lot of it is even their tendencies. There, there's no guarantee they're going to do it in a fight. Um, so you just kind of got to work on my tools. And unfortunately, I think my last, you know, even my last couple fights in the UFC and then my last, well, my last four fights, kind of got away from my own my own fighting style because I was trying to maybe be something I wasn't. And um, no, no, hopefully I get, kind of get back to, you know, kind of how I fight. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> You're fighting an undefeated fighter. Is there something special about giving a fighter their first those? Do you like that challenge a little bit? Um, yeah, I think, honestly, I, because my, my UFC career, I think I fought for three or four debuts. Um, that was kind of, you know, people want to make, that was my nickname. You know, you're, you mean, if you want to be a gatekeeper, call yourself the, you know the uh, the prospect killer because <laughs> you know, I kind of killed a you know beat a lot of prospects. Um, I don't think there's anything more about uh, more important or less important about it. Um, you know, like especially now that I'm getting older, these young younger guys are getting full of piss and vinegar, <laughs> and you know they kind of got that um, that old attitude that us you know I'm not that old, but I used to be like I can do anything and I can take whatever. Um, so. They're definitely, it's a different fighting style, uh, fighting a, an undefeated prospect, a younger one for sure. You talked about your style. Um, I think in a lot of fighters' careers at some point, they do talk about wanting to, you know, some of the, the wrestlers, oh, I want to do a little bit of the striking or vice versa. Have you ever gotten wrapped into that at all, where at one point you felt like maybe you were fighting a different style for other people? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I was trying to, you know, that's... You always want to evolve as a fighter, but you want to you don't want to stay within, you know, a realistic realm of where you're at for you know my athletic abilities, I guess. But uh, that's where like the striking. I like you know I landed a couple of good shots in some fights. I'm like, oh, I can I can strike. Well, I'm gonna be a striker, so you know, go away from my grappling, go away from that grindy stuff, and then you know get get knocked out a couple of times, and that will kind of refresh your memory. Um, and it goes back to uh, one of my uh, guy, guy, kind of got me started. MMA um, said to me this summer, he's like, he's "Like Tim, you're a good striker if you're going against another wrestler." He's like, "But think of it this way: good strikers, they've been striking the same time that you've been wrestling. You're not going to outstrike him because he's been doing it whole, his whole life." I'm like, 
All right, that makes sense. I guess that, that's kind of a light bulb. And that's not saying I can't strike, but I'm just not you know as elite as other people. So that's got to, you got to stay with your own, within yourself.